The newest version of Apple's iPhone interface has just been announced, iOS 14, and it features something that I've been looking forward to for a long time, a complete rethinking of the home screen. Since the beginning of its existence, well over a decade ago, opening your iPhone has presented you with the same experience, a grid of icons that, when tapped, launch you into the app of your choosing. This made a lot of sense back when the iPhone first launched. At that time, there were no third-party apps at all, with only about 20 apps taking up the screen, many of which still exist today, like phone, messages, and calendar. Then, when the App Store came into existence, it still made sense because the average person was likely only downloading a handful of apps, maybe enough to extend into a second or third screen of icons. This is no longer the case. As Apple pointed out in their keynote, there's an app for everything. And that means that our grid has grown very, very full. I just checked and I have 328 apps on my iPhone. That's far too many to organize in a meaningful grid. Years ago, Apple added the ability to create folders of apps, but that felt more like a stopgap than a true solution. Now, apps were hidden in a grid within a grid, and that's not quite what I was hoping for. Last year, I decided I was done with the grid entirely and radically changed the way that my iPhone home screen looked. And I did it in a very weird, hacky way. I recognize that one of the main problems with the grid for me is that I often have to use multiple apps for different contexts, different apps to read different books, and so on. And what I really wanted was small batches of apps which felt unified in theme. So I created stacks of icons, a stack of reading apps with books, Kindle, Audible, and Libby, a stack of audio apps with Overcast, Dark Noise, Indle, Spotify, and Stitcher, and so on, a stack of base level apps, writing and productivity apps, work apps, game and video apps. The idea was that each of these stacks would be built up from a primary app in the dock. To make this work, I had to do some strange things. I had to change my iPhone background to pure black and download fake blank icons so that I could move everything around. It was weird and imperfect, but it really worked the way that my brain does, and it was so much better, in my opinion, than the grid. A lot of apps didn't make it to the stacks, and that was fine because for years I haven't really been using the home screen to launch apps at all. I've been using Spotlight. Spotlight is the menu that you get when you pull down from the home screen, and it automatically brings up a list of Siri suggestions, apps which it thinks you want at that moment, and the app that I'm looking for is almost always in there, including, of course, Twitter. As I grew more and more frustrated with having to bury hundreds of apps in folders and push them aside, I had a wish. I wished that this Siri suggestions pull down and the home screen as we knew it would swap places. I wished that when I opened up my phone, I would see a list of apps that my phone knew I wanted to see. And if the one I was looking for was missing, then I could swipe over and see a list or grid. I wanted this because the grid just no longer worked for me. How, when you have hundreds of apps on your phone, can you possibly lay them all out so that the icons are within reach? You just can't. With iOS 14, Apple seemed to recognize that this no longer worked, and they've created a solution. The new operating system lets apps become home screen sized widgets, and one of those widgets is Siri suggestions. In my opinion, it's good enough that this is all I'll ever really need. And even better, instead of shoving the rest of the icons into the last page of your home screen, you can now remove the apps from the grid without removing them from your phone. So that page full of apps that you've buried out of sight can now just be removed entirely, and all of those apps are found in a new space called the App Library, which puts them in folders for you. These folders, when filled beyond four apps, automatically present the top three, which you can open immediately, and then put the rest of them in a list which you can access from the bottom right. Even though I have hundreds of apps on my phone, I'm pretty confident that between the widgets, Siri suggestions, and this page, I'll always have what I'm looking for within reach. This feels like a wonderful compromise. Do you like the grid? You can keep the grid. Do you want to change the grid up just a little? You can add a single widget and leave the rest as is. But do you want to get rid of the static grid completely? Now you can, which means that instead of having my old weird stacks of icons squeezed into multiple pages, I can now have a truly contextual home screen. 
If you've listened to me talk about all of this and feel rather uninspired, I get it. It's just the home screen and it's just widgets. But this is one of those cases where I think we don't yet know quite the full potential of what this type of change could bring. For a long, long while, it's felt as if there was the home screen and then the rest of the screens. Especially because of the monotony of the grid, it just wasn't worthwhile to curate anything beyond that first page. Now, with functional and diverse widgets, I could easily see myself creating multiple different pages, each with their own purpose. You could create a screen for writing, a screen for working, a screen for tracking fitness, a screen for exploring the city. Though on the surface iOS 14's change is just widgets, it's a major shift from the incredibly stagnant grid that came before it. And I love it when something that's become the norm gets shaken up. It's easy for technology to get bogged down, slowly iterated on year over year. We have explosions of change, like the move from smartphones to iPhones, and then we have that iPhone gradually become better year over year without considering how to truly move it into the future. When I see the changes that are coming with iOS 14, the new personalized home screen, more featureful messaging, and a Siri that's more powerful than ever, I see changes that are built to make our devices more predictive, more context-driven, and designed to just get out of the way and enhance whatever it is that you're doing. That's technology worth having, and I'm excited about the way that I think these features will be utilized. Though iOS 14 was only just announced and is entering beta right now, I'm curious to see what kinds of widgets will be developed and what the iPhone will look like when the feature launches for everyone in the fall. I think it'll be a very large shift as, for the first time, the apps we've used for years will be free of the grid that we've all known since the dawn of the iPhone itself. An iPod, a phone, <laughs> and an internet communicator. An iPod, <laughs> a phone. <laughs> are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, today Apple is going to reinvent the phone.